the investigation of former President Trump's handling of classified documents. According to an NBC News report, Christina Bob, a lawyer for former President Trump, is speaking with federal investigators in the Mar-a-Lago probe. She signed a letter in June certifying that all of the sensitive material the former president moved from the White House to Mar-a-Lago had been returned. But when the FBI searched the former president's home in Florida two months later, agents found more than 100 additional records marked classified. According to the report, Bob told the Justice Department last week that another Trump lawyer, Evan Cochran, drafted the letter. She said she signed it on his orders. All right, David, you're back with us. Uh, this idea, this, this statement that uh, Bob submitted saying that she was making a certification based on the information she's been provided, does that spare her from being criminally or ethically liable? It puts her in a very awkward position, John. She's asked to sign a document almost at the 99th hour that the rest of the members of the president's legal team won't sign. They brought her in and she couched her answer in a way that might save her. She said that she was signing this to the best of her knowledge and belief. And that means she had to rely upon information that somebody else was giving to her. If she hadn't done that, she would have been on a hard hook to be held accountable for saying, we've provided all the documents because as we now know, that was not the case. So that's why she needed to come in and discuss what she did with the people from the Department of Justice. She's put herself in a very significantly awkward position, and she now needs to convince the people at the department that, yes, she signed this, but it was only based on what other people told her. And, John, quite frankly, as a lawyer, yeah. all I have is my word, and that's all my reputation relies upon. So we have to be very careful what we sign and attest to. Well, and David, is there no obligation for a lawyer to do a little bit more than just take somebody else's word for it when you're attesting to something with that kind of weight? Isn't there an obligation to maybe uh, check it out yourself? I can't speak for anybody else, John, but I believe I have that obligation. I'm not just going to take somebody else's word for it, whether it's connected to a specific declaration that I'm making or a variety of other things that I need to be able to inform both the court, prosecutors, my fellow uh, counsel, what I know and how much I know and what I believe to be true or not to be true. If you're, uh, based on your skills as a prosecutor, um, uh, Bob named other lawyers here, um, does that create a condition for lawyers to maybe not all uh, stick together? Um, if you're seeking the truth of the matter here in a, in a situation in which one lawyer is pointing at another? John, I, I have a, a saying that, you know, sort of drives me. The truth always remains the same. And as long as you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what somebody else said or didn't say. And so now you're right. This puts everybody in a rather awkward position because she has now put herself in between these other people who have made these representations to her. That's certainly something that a prosecutor is going to use to take advantage of one person's testimony and use that against another person. All right, David Weinstein, thank you for helping us work through those two cases. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It's my pleasure.